Alrighty, welcome to Algebra 1 uh, video starting with linear equations. We're going to start with sequences and patterns, uh, which is going to lead us into linear equations and linear graphs. Um, I hope you enjoy. This corresponds also to sec uh, section in your textbook uh, 3.1. Sorry for that misspelling. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is look back and try to remember what we've done before with sequences. Uh, we already did sequences that were called geometric sequences, which meant that you went up by a constant ratio each time. And these were actually a little bit harder than what we're going to do now. So hopefully, um, if you remember and understand the sequences we did before, the sequences we're going to do now are going to seem a little bit easier. So before, um, to do a sequence, we had something like 2, comma 4, comma 8, comma 16. And to get from one thing to the next, you had to multiply. So the rule to get from one thing to the next was like multiply times 2 or whatever it was. Um, and that led to an exponential equation, if you remember, y equals a times the ratio to the, uh, to the x power, where x was the number of times you um, multiplied, ratio was the number you multiplied by each time, a was the starting value, and y was the ending value. Um, so, you know, this is just to refresh your memory on these kind of sequences where you have a list of numbers, um, you have a starting value, say for this one it would be 2, and you have a rule, in this one it would be times 2, and that could lead you to this equation, y equals 2 times 2 to the x, something like that, and then you could find the fifth term, or the seventh term, or the amount of money you had in the account 10 years later, or something like that. So we're going to do something similar to that, but a little bit easier. Okay, so now we're going to learn about sequences again, but instead of a common ratio, they have a common difference. So instead of multiplying or dividing, you're going to add or subtract a certain amount each time. So let me give you an example of a very simple one. Let's start with like negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5, etc. So you can see right away the starting value is negative 3. And the rule, I hope you can see, is plus 2. Okay, so any sequence like this, the important two things are writing down the starting value and writing down the rule. The rule is the amount you add each time, the starting value is the starting value. So I'll even write this in, um, the amount added each time. And it could be subtracted. Subtracting is the same as adding a negative. So the rule is amount added each time. So to get from one term to the next, you follow the rule, adding or subtracting a certain amount. Okay, so this leads us to an equation to find any term. Let me go back one. Suppose you wanted to find the next term in the sequence. You would just follow the rule, and then you would say that the next term is going to be 7, and then 9, then 11, and you could keep going for a long ways. But what if I said, what's the 500th term? You wouldn't want to sit there and add 2 over and over and over and over. Um, you might want to have a shortcut. Okay, so this leads us to an equation. So if you think about it, if you have the first term, and then the second, and then the third, and then you want to go all the way to the 500th. So let's use the same sequence we had before, where we started at negative 3, and then we had negative 1, and then we had 1, and we're trying to find what's this 500th term. Well, to get from the first term to the second term, I had to step forward one time. So I had to add 2, which was the rule. I had to add 2 one time. Then, to get from the second and third, I had to add 2 again. So this was one step. From here to here would be two steps forward. So how many steps forward is it going to be to go all the way to the 500th term? Well, you can see right away, the number of steps forward is one less than the term number. The number of steps forward here is only one step forward to get to term 2, two steps forward to get to term 3, so it should make sense that it's 499 steps to get to the 500th term. The reason it's one less is because you already have the first term, um, so you're only taking 499 more steps to get to the 500th term. Okay, so we're going to add 2 each time, and how many times we're going to do it? 499. So we started with negative 3, then we added 
to 499 times, so that our final value is going to be negative 3 plus 2 times 499. Okay, and then we can work this out, final value. Order of operations says we should do this multiplication first, so 499 times 2 is what? 998, negative 3 plus 998. So our final value corresponding to the 500th term should be 995 if you add those two together. So you can see right away that's much quicker than if we just tried um, to count by two so many times. So we can write, we can, we can kind of encapsulate or summarize this process of taking your starting value and then adding a certain amount, whatever your rule is, or your increment, adding that increment or rule each time for a certain number of times. So the final equation we can get is the final value equals the starting value, I'll put i for initial, plus the rule times the number of steps. Okay, so this equation is really, really important. And I'll label this here starting value. And then this one here is the ending value. And remember the number of steps is number of terms, or say, term number minus one. Okay, so if you know the initial value, and you know the rule, you could find the tenth term by taking nine steps forward, you could find the hundredth term by taking ninety-nine steps forward, or you could find any term in the entire sequence by taking uh, the number of steps forward needed to get to that term. So um, any sequence like this where you count by adding or subtracting a certain amount is called an arithmetic sequence. Okay, um, And that's, that's essentially the end of this lesson. Um, I guess I can do one more example. Uh, no, I think that's enough. We'll do some more examples in class or you can go back and look um, if you want. But essentially the th important things to remember are finding the rule is the amount you add or subtract each time and finding the starting value. So if you're given the rule and starting value, you can generate a sequence. If you're given a sequence, you can find the rule and starting value. Once you know the rule and starting value, you can plug them into this equation right here and right here, and you can uh, then find the final value if you know the number of steps, or you can know the final value and find the number of steps.